Now I'm going to transport my effects onto different parts of the character. And because of having cut the character up, we'll have to look at the effects for certain parts of the body individually. There's also a couple of things which we want to take into consideration when we do sort out the effects is that we want to sort out and take a look at the hands and we need to think carefully about what we're going to do with the head. So the question with the hands If we just grab an arm, we'll see that when you go a little bit too far over, have this over here, which when we get our final render, I don't really like the effect. It's a reasonably complex effect which we're going to do. You can also either just paint that out afterwards when you are about to do your final edit, or what you can do is you can have a patch, which will basically just be a drawing which will cover this area which would be your skin color. But we're going to fix that in the effects and it's a slightly more complicated way around, but it's useful to know how to do it. So now we're going to turn the head into a sub X sheet. To do that, we're going to go to the X sheet. We're going to select all these columns over here. And we're going to collapse them by going to the X sheet and select Collapse. Just click Apply and they'll collapse into a sub X sheet. What we'll notice straight away is that with the sub X sheet, the head has moved down to the center of the drawing because it has lost its connection to the rig. So we are just going to open a schematic. If we open the schematic, we will see that the character's head is no longer attached to the torso. So we're going to reattach the character's head to the torso. And what we are going to do is we're going to move back up and change it back to being on the hook because it will read the hooks for the root drawing inside the column and we can use that to link it with. Now we are going to open our sub X sheet. Once we're in our sub X sheet we'll see it will switch to the columns which are only in the sub X sheet. And if we go to the FX, we'll see all of those columns over here. And we'll see that it has maintained all of the effects nodes that were not plugged into the X sheet and did not have columns plugged into them. As long as the columns are not plugged into the FX nodes, they should persist through any of the sub X sheets you make. Now we will just set up the effects for the face and the hair. Let's make sure this is the correct one. Over node. 
Can I filter? Keep the lines. color so that the effect does not override the color. And that's the basic effects for our head done. We'll now go back to the main character. Now we're back at our main character and what we're going to want to do is make sure that the torso removes the hair at the back of the head. So we're going to do that with a couple of mat nodes. Get a mat out, and we'll just get the torso and the sub X sheet together. Sub X sheet will go to the source, the torso will go to the mat, and we'll plug it in, and we will see that it is cutting out everything. To compensate for this, we're going to make sure that the torso doesn't cut out either the hair or the face. To do that, we're going to get a palette filter and we are going to get a, another mask, another mask out. Now we will take the torso and we are going to Cut the torso using colors from the head. Those colors are going to be the hair. The line. We're going to use that as the mat instead. You'll see that it's not cutting what we want to because I've forgotten to change it to only retain these colors. So, let's basically set up our head. Unfortunately, when we do the animation for the rig, we're still going to see it over the neck there, but that's not a major issue in this case. So now we're going to do the effect for the torso, which is going to be reasonably straightforward. It's going to get an over node again. And... So in to the effect. mode. And that is the torso done. 
just go back into this effect and make sure just add even skin. The legs are going to be reasonably straightforward as the effect is only going to be on the skin. We'll take this effect over here and we will make an overnode. Another overnode. Copy and paste the herb filter. New Pebbles filter. Since the shoe is not part of the lighting effect, we will just repeat the leg beneath the two effects belt. We will repeat the process for the other leg. Okay, so we've finished all of the other parts. Now we're going to take a look at the hand. Now, as I've said before, the hand is probably easier to sort out with a patch. So if you wanted to do a patch, what you would do is you would make another drawing which would be attached to the arm over here, attached through the same point as the arm, but would just have a stacking order of one and would just paint over the area which is problematic in the patch. It's a very simple process. It does create more drawings in your X sheet, but it is not a big deal. What we're going to do, however, is we are going to do the complicated way, just so that I can show you how it is done. So what we are going to want to do is we are going to want to get a map node. And we are going to want to cut out the arm. And we want to cut out the hand with the arm. As you'll see, the results are far from satisfactory. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to cut out with only the skin color. So that we use a pellet filter. And we will use an overload. And what we'll see is that we are still having the line showing where we don't want it to. The reason for this is we 
stop rendering is that the line is our line is actually centered over here and that the color for the skin is actually going to the center of the line. So in order to solve this, we will use another map node, but we will use an erode dilate node. We will plug that in after the source to the mat. And Get it to where we want it. It can take a bit of finessing. And then we will repeat this effect on the other arm and we will put the lighting effects on each of the arms. Okay, now I have finished both the arms in terms of the cutting out, but we need to add the effects in. There is one problem which you have with adding in the effects, and that problem is it is very difficult to extract the final outline of an effect in open tunes. To do that we're going to have to use a mask. We have two options. We have the HSV key and the RGB key. Both of which can be used and both of which will work better or worse in certain circumstances. In this case I'm going to go for the Hue saturation value, and what we're going to do is we're going to try and extract that outline with this. So, first of all, we're going to invert it, and as you can see, it's not a particularly good result. So, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the ranges, see what that does. And push them a little bit more. Not quite perfect. Now, this is where we get to the part which we don't want. We don't want any of these colors to come in. So we want to try and get it as good as possible before any of the other colors pop in. Okay, that will be about as well as we're going to do. Just a little bit. And now let's get an over node. We'll then blend in our effects with the overnotes. So start off with a straight out overnote and we'll just put it on top like that. 
then what we're going to want is we're going to want to copy and paste our shading notes Want another oval node? So here we will get our shadow based on the entirety of the arm rather than keeping the hand and the arm separate and then take a bit of finessing to get the lines the way you want them to and I'll use the erode the dilate node to control my shaded areas and shrink them a bit so that you have the lines from beneath coming through a bit more Now we'll repeat it for the other arm. Okay, so essentially the rig is now finished. But we'll just discuss a couple of the design concepts behind this rig. This rig is basically a rig for a character which is not going to have a completely finished rig. It's designed so it is easy to do replacement drawings. So for example when you're doing the drawings for the blink or the drawings for the mouth so you can do lip sync or smiles or frowns, extra drawings for the hands. But also for a character like this, if you were to do a series with a character like this, you could well be required to do different sets of clothing for different episodes, especially for a character like this, which is a female character, could very often have quite an extensive wardrobe. And it is far easier to update and do appropriate drawings for a character where all the limbs are separated like this than in other methods. What I'll do in the next video is I will do a far more straightforward and simple version of this rig which will be quicker to animate but it will be less flexible and will be a lot more difficult in terms of if you needed to update a rig. This one you will have to change for all the limbs and animate each limb at a time which is not going to take a huge amount of time, but 
we can actually set up this rig so that all the limbs in the torso are only driven by one skeleton. And I will go through that approach in the next video.